And welcome along. So we're here today to um, cover the Health and Safety at Work Act, which came into force on the 4th of April this year to replace our 20-something year old Health and Safety and Employment Act. Um, I'm assuming you're keen to find out some information about the new act, what it means. So I've got a slideshow I'm going to run through. I'll also be able to explain some stuff with the whiteboard because I take it a lot of you are from the construction industry, the majority, are, which means that you, uh, you like seeing and doing rather than just listening to someone droning on. So we'll try and do a lot less droning. Um, I'm not going to read the slides. You can do that, yeah? Okay. So, I guess a little bit of history behind this is in order. Um, you probably all heard about the Pike River mine disaster. That was one of the catalysts for reviewing our health and safety law. The uh, Royal Commission that looked into that found the, both the law and the, uh, the regulator, which was uh, the Labour group from MB at the time, wanting. Um, but there was also a task force that had been assembled to do a scheduled 20-year check on the Health and Safety and Employment Act to see how effective it had been. Not very, apparently. It had done some things, but it was decided that an upgrade was ne needed. So a, uh, a task, the task group wrote a paper, the blue paper. It made a whole raft of recommendations to the government. And um, the government are not obliged to take notice of these recommendations. Um, and in some cases, for other uh, commissions and task groups, they, they pretty well go, yeah, nice report, won't be doing that yet. Uh, on this one, they adopted nearly every recommendation in, in the force. In, in the, from the task force. So we um, are in a position where we have uh, adopted what they call the Robins model, or more commonly known as the Australian model, uh, which means for any of you who have ever worked in Australia, uh, there'll be a lot of familiarity with this legislation. Um, also very good for our um, economic relations with Australia that we're working to the same systems now. Okay, uh, because I think it's fair to say a lot of Kiwis go to Australia and a lot of Australian, both individuals and companies, come and work in New Zealand, so uh, that'll get rid of some of the confusion. Um, there were some uh, targets set. We'd like to see a 25% reduction in um, workplace uh, serious injuries and fatalities by uh, 2020, so that's four years from now. So um, that's uh, a significant reduction because we suffer between 80 and 100 workplace fatalities in New Zealand every year, okay, from accidental causes. We suffer um, another 700 to 1,000 health-related premature deaths every year. Um, it's a fairly significant part of our workforce of around 2.2 million workers, and um, compared with our economic trading partners, we don't look very good. Okay, we can do better. Uh, Kiwis usually beat the world at almost everything, don't we? I thought it would be good to do this one as well. Get a few more people home each Christmas, each day. So um, that's sort of the driver and the impetus around this and why it's happened. Um, so I guess we need to look at what does it all mean? Okay, and uh, I guess to know what it means for you is to understand who you are. So I just want to have a little uh, show of hands to get a feel for who's in the room. Um, who's attending here today as an employee or a worker? Excellent, good to see you guys, welcome. Okay, um, how many of you are senior managers in companies or um, own your own companies? Excellent. Have I had any um, health and safety professionals sneaking in just to pinch some stuff? Anyone? There's usually one or two at each one. I had about three or four of them. Anyone from WorkSafe here? They normally announce themselves when they arrive, so no, nobody from WorkSafe. That's, that's all good. Okay. So I guess one of the fundamental things that uh, we'll, we'll be looking at, what's, what's changing? What's staying the same? What are the responsibilities and what you actually need to do? Okay, and by the show of hands going up, I suppose the last group I need to find out is um, the self-employed, no staff, but self-employed, excellent. So you copped it the worst, but it's easiest to comply with because you just really have to look after one person generally, you have duties to others. So um, here's one of the fundamental shifts. 
under the old health and safety legislation, the question was, do I have a responsibility? And we're shifting from that point of view to what is my responsibility, because everyone at work now has a responsibility. Okay, so it's really now, what is it? Is the, the question to be asking yourselves. This is straight from the senior management, the chief executive of WorkSafe, Gordon MacDonald. Don't panic. Okay. Um, there's uh, been a fair amount of anxiety out in the workplace with the introduction of this new law. Who's, who's here has been feeling a little bit anxious about what's going on? Thank you for your honesty, yeah. This is, this is not my first time through this. Um, I bought my first, I've been managing companies, I bought my first construction company in um, 1991. So I bought half shares in with the existing owner. Um, and then in uh, 1993, they bought in the Health and Safety and Employment Act. You couldn't have got worse timing, could you? So up until the 1st of April 1993, um, I was working in the scaffolding and rigging industry, high-risk industry, okay? But we got around that, we paid our workers money. So they actually had allowances for height money, danger money, dirt money. In fact, a, a construction workers' uh, wages were half made up of allowances that compensated them for taking ris unacceptable risks. Does that sound familiar to a few of you? That's the way it was done. And so my world was turned upside down in 93. They brought in an act saying I couldn't do that anymore. I actually had to look after my workers. So I assimilated with that. Um, there was a totally non-related event um, on uh, New Year's Eve, year 2000, called Y2K. That turned out to be a non-event as well. And now we've got this new change in our society, the Health and Safety at Work Act. And I can assure you, once again, it's not an event to panic over. I think one of the things that put the wind up people was you heard fines went up. Yeah, is that worrying anyone? Okay, because I was talking to a whole bunch of builders at a Carter's breakfast over in Masterton earlier in the year, and they were very concerned that the fines had gone up to potentially, at the highest level, $3 million. Shit, yeah. Yeah, from half a million dollars. Okay, so this is the reality on the fines. You've gone from a fine you can't afford to a fine you can't afford. You with me on this? Don't worry about the numbers. Okay, I also want to assure you that the, um, the WorkSafe, the regulator, are taking a really good approach. Uh, they've been restructured, uh, they've reformed as a, a Crown agency, um, and they are taking a 3E approach. And the first two E's are engagement and education. They are saving enforcement for a last resort and for any of you to incur any enforcement action. And there are a lot of those that happen from warnings through to prohibition notices and improvement notices before you will ever end up in court, you've literally got to be criminally negligent to end up in court. You with me on this? Okay, so I think let's take the focus off not ending up in court. Here's a good focus for you. Let's get our people home safe every day. How's that sound as a, 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 an aim for an organisation? The workers in the room here happy about that? Because we're talking about you guys going home each day, yeah? Okay. Let's move on uh, to why not panic. Um, I'm going to cover some of the, the changes that have taken place. And although the structure has changed, and uh, those of you who are in charge of your organisational policies and procedures are going to have to do some amendments to reflect the new legislation, at the coalface very little has changed. Okay? So we um, have, uh, under the whole Health and Safety at Work Act, a, uh, the duty on the employer was to provide a safe work environment. Under the new Health and Safety at Work Act, the employer, who is now called a PCBU, is still required to provide a safe work environment and safe work activities. Um, and if I can use an example from my own work life, um, falls from height, fairly high risk? Yeah. So it's a high risk activity working at height. Falling from height under the old law had to be prevented and under the new law it had to be prevented and we'll still use a guardrail to do it. 
So if you've been putting up guardrails to prevent falls from height under the old legislation, you are still compliant with the new legislation. And that goes for everything you are doing to manage your hazards. If you are doing nothing under the old legislation, really good time to look at improving your ways. Okay? So when I say don't panic, don't panic. If you're compliant under the old legislation, I am quoting WorkSafe here, you will still be compliant under the new legislation, but start setting a program for reformatting and rewriting your health and safety manual to change out some of the uh, wording. The major changes we've had is we no longer do hazard management, we now do risk management, and I'm going to go in and explain what that means in, in a, a little bit of detail. Um, we've created duties for officers those previously didn't exist. So if you're not an officer, it doesn't affect you. If you are an officer, um, it does. And I will go into some detail of what an officer is and what that means as well. Okay, but by and large, uh, the intent of our legislation is all still the same. So we'll look at the PCBU term. Uh, under the new legislation, worker engagement and participation has been stepped up. In fact, this is a full set of regulations on it now under the new, because not only did the Act come out on the 4th of April, so did a number of sets of regulations and there will be more coming. Okay, so there are worker engagement regulations. Um, there are risk management regulations, so I'll be going into those a bit. Um, there is basically nobody who doesn't have a responsibility now, and directors who are officers have this new duty of due diligence, so we'll have a little bit of a look what that looks like. Yes, there are stronger fines and penalties. There's no two ways about it, but literally they have gone from what you can't afford to what you can't afford. Okay. And um, we've now had some loopholes closed around uh, designers and manufacturers, architects, engineers, those sorts of people who, particularly for construction projects, quite often sat remote from the project. But one asks the question, so someone designing a new building or structure, do they have any influence at the design stage on risks that will be coming up in both the construction process and the finished product? Yes, the answer is, any designers in the room, by the way? Excellent, so you'll be interesting to hear this. Okay, uh, the good news is, is that I had a lot of interaction with the design fraternity and um, they have been adopting safety and design practices by and large for the last five to seven years <coughs> anyway, so they were well prepared for this moment, uh, particularly the larger firms, uh, ones that have uh, international influence, those sorts of things. Um, it's actually just providing good value to their customers to think about these things at the design stage. But they've now been included with everyone else in the law, if you have some influence over the risk, then you have a duty to do something about the risk. These are the three responsibilities we have now, PCBUs, officers, workers. Okay, I think it's probably, um, who's fairly familiar with the old Health and Safety and Employment Act? <coughs> no one? Oh well this won't be much use then. Okay. Basic stuff, employers were required to provide safety at work, workers were required to ensure their actions and inactions didn't cause any problems, um, contractors had to be looked after by their principals, uh, hazards had to be identified, assessed and managed, that managing fell in the old EIM, eliminate, isolate, minimise, this sounding familiar to most of you? So in fact, as although only one hand went up, probably a few more should have. Okay, um, all workers had to be uh, trained and either experienced or supervised. You had to put emergency procedures in place for anything that could, the plan B, anything that could go wrong. So that was the basically the structure. One of the things I want to look at is we had principles. And a principal was by default a, uh, an organisation or person who engaged a contractor. We also had employers, and employers were deemed that because they had employees. It's, it's a pretty simple system, isn't it? Okay. There were some other duty holders within the old act, but these are the main ones I want to look at. What links this group to this group? exactly what links them. So under the old legislation, you had a duty to someone if you had engaged them for hire or reward. 
Um, that's a simplistic way of looking at it because you also had a duty not to harm the public, which everyone had that duty in the workplace, but the, the duty holders in this scenario is, were linked by money and a contract of some kind, employment contract or contract of works. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, so under the new legislation, all this group have become PCBUs, persons controlling a business or undertaking. Um, WorkSafe specifically asked me not to coin the phrase peekaboo. It's too late. It's off. And this includes the self-employed, it includes employers, it includes principals, clients, and all this group have become workers. So although you may still be an employee of an employer, under the new legislation the employer is a PCBU and the employee is a worker. So we've really simplified the system. What links PCBUs to workers? It's not, no longer money, no. Actually you were here to learn this, so I shouldn't be asking you this, I should be telling you this. risk. Okay, so what they're saying now, and take the typical construction project, um, the uh, client may well have consultants on the project, yes, looking after things. There's a main contractor that's engaged, will probably be run by that uh, consultant to a degree, uh, but the consultant's smart under the old law, he said send all the bills to the client. So the <laughs> consultant didn't have any responsibilities <coughs> there were some, but by and large, there's no con no financial connection between me and the main contract. All the bills are going to the client, yeah? So, under the new one, <coughs> you're a P if you're a PCBU and you have influence over this risk, you owe a duty to anyone who's exposed to that risk. You no longer have to have a direct financial or contractual link. Does that make sense to everyone? Much simpler system. And there will be multiple PCBUs on a construction project. And so the new law is very clear they are required to coordinate, consult and communicate with each other to ensure everyone understands their role in managing that risk. It's a really simple system. And whoever is exposed to it, they have joint responsibility for making sure that they are protected or prevented from harm from the risk. So the models actually simplify quite, quite a lot. Any questions around that? Great. Someone was asking me how long was this going for? Any, anywhere from an hour and a quarter to two and a quarter hours. <laughs> Be aiming at an hour and a half if I can. Okay.